In this lesson, I'll be going through the Work Together 4-2 problem on page 108 of your textbook. It's called Posting to a General Ledger. A completed journal and general ledger accounts are given in the working papers, which are actually on the spreadsheet I gave you. Your instructor will guide th you through this following example. Omar Bohi owns a service business that uses the following accounts. Um, and they're all listed in your book on page 108. First, post all entries in the general journal. And second, prove cash. The next, the balance on the next available check stub is 1,720. So first we're going to post the entries in the general journal. Sorry, post the entries in the general ledger from the general journal. I said that backwards. Okay, so our first entry is um, cash debit of 2,500 on April 1st. So I'll come over here to the general ledger, to the cash account, and I'll type in April, tab over first. And this was from journal page one, so we'll put G1 here. And then it was $2,500 debit. And we had a zero balance before, so it's still 2,500. Okay, so now we finished putting that one in. Cash is account number 110. So I will put in the post reference column 110 to signify that we have posted the cash over. Omar Bohi Capital, credit of 2,500 on April 1st. So I'll find the capital account. Go April 1st, still journal one. H1, and he had a credit of 2,500 from investing in the company, so the balance is 2,500. One thing I can do to make this a little easier is I can zoom out, and I can see just a little more at the same time. Oh, I forgot to look at my capital account number. It was 310, so I'll put 310 here. Prepaid insurance, April 3rd, $330 debit. So prepaid insurance, April 3rd, still page one. It will be this whole time. And it's 330 debit, 330. And this is account 140, so that here. And cash credited 330 on April 3rd. I don't have to write April again because it's already there once. I would only put the month or the year in if they changed. We went into May, so this is G1, and it was a 330 credit. Now, I don't put this over here in the credit balance. I subtract 330 from the 2500. So I could do that, you know, in my head if I wanted to, but I could also go equals and put a formula in the previous balance minus any credits, because it's a debit balance, plus any debits from that transaction. And then that did the math for me. Reduced our balance, our debit balance since we had a credit, so it makes sense. All right, so count number 110, back in our post reference. Now we go to supplies on April 4th. $160. So we'll type April 4th, G1, $160 debit because supplies is an asset account that increases with the debit. $130 is our number. Accounts payable, ready supply. There is a liability increases with the credit. 160 bucks on April 4th. So we'll come over here, April 4th, accounts payable, ready supply. G1, I think I said 160. No previous balance, so the balance is a credit, 160, account number 210. I bring that back over here. Cash. Um, debit of 325 on the 8th. So, G1, 
325. And this formula, since I put it there, I can drag it down with that corner and it will continue that formula for each line. Nope. So I could literally carry that the whole way down my page right now if I want to. Okay, so count number 110 was cash. <clears throat> this just really lets the computer do the calculating for me, minimizes my risk of errors. Just check that your formulas aren't messed up at times. Okay, sales, credit of 325, also on April 8th. Okay, so we haven't done sales yet. April 8th, G1, 325. And sales is a normal credit balance, so that increases it. And 410 is sales account number. So put that in here to say it's done. It's posted. Okay, accounts receivable, Dan Carroll. $122 on the 9th. So April 9th, June 1, we must have sold things on account to Dan Carroll. So he owes us $122. He'll pay someday. Okay, 120 And sales was credited in that transaction on April 9th, 122, April 9th, G1, 122. So then this one is the balance would equal the previous balance plus any credits because it's a credit, credit balance minus any debits. So that did increase our credit balance, which makes sense. And it's account number 410. Rent expense on the 12th. That looks like we paid cash for rent. $260 on the 12th. So we'll go April 12, G1, 260. Remember, expenses are normal debit balances because they reduce your owner's equity. All right, 510 is the account number. Cash. Um, we paid cash for the rent expense. So it's 260 on the 12th. When we pay cash, it's a credit, which is what was in our journal. So it's still gonna be um, a debit balance because 260 is not going to take away the whole 2400 we have. That looks right down to two, 2235. All right, 110 is our account number. And now accounts payable ready supply on the 15th $80 debit. Um, 15th $80 debit. And now this one, uh, accounts payable, liability, normal credit balance. This debit will reduce the credit balance. So it's this one minus any debits um, plus any credits. So now they only owe us $80. So they paid half of their balance down, 210 or we paid half of our balance down. Sorry, I said that wrong. And cash is gonna be a credit of 80 on the 15th because we paid that money to the um, supply company. And I said a credit of 80. So we'll just carry this formula down with that plus sign. 2235 minus 80 is 2155. That would be correct. Reducing our debit balance, account number 110. Cash is a $65 debit. Oh, it looks like um, Dan Carroll paid some of his money he owed us. So on the 16th, we will debit cash. For that money, Dan Carroll 
paid us, which was $65. And we'll just carry this formula down again. Cash went up a little. And that was account number 110. Accounts receivable, Dan Carroll. This is also on the 16th, part of that double entry accounting. And it's a $65 credit. So this will reduce his debit balance because remember accounts receivable is an asset. So it would be the debit balance minus any credits plus any debits. He owes us $57 now, account number 120. Omar Bowie drawing. The owner must have taken some money taken some money out or some cash out. So $500 on the 25th. So April 25th, G1, and this is a debit. Did I say 500? I think I said 500. Yes. And so then you put it over here, debit balance, account number 320, bring it back over, and your cash would reduce by that amount on the 25th. If you don't want to keep writing G1, you can pro oh, might want to change it to 2. So you might be able to grab numerous G1s and then drag it down, because then it will recognize the pattern as they are all G1. Okay, so $500 dollar credit because we paid cash and we'll just carry this formula down and we have $1,720 in cash and this matters because on we posted everything they're all posted which is awesome now we were asked in number two to prove cash the balance on the next available check stub is $1,720 Great news, we are at 1,720. So maybe you just wanna like fill that in so you can see where you proved it. And that is chapter four, lesson two, work together. From the Century 21 Accounting General Journal Book by Gilbertson, Lehman, and Gentine, edition 10 -E. Give them all credit for this resource.